Good morning, church. It is Sunday, November 8th. So glad to see everybody. I really love when we all are online worshiping together, and it's just great to feel that energy. Today, I want to do something a little different. So I'm going to do a call and response. I know some of you know this. It's not very hard. Molly's going to help me. Um, we're going to do it once, and then I want you to get everybody around. I want to hear you. We're going to say it once, and then I'm going to do it two more times, and then, then we'll say amen, okay? So we're going. God is good. All the time. Okay, everybody ready? Those are pretty simple, right? God is good. You say all the time. Two times. Get everybody around. You got time to get everybody. We're going to do this call and response. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Um, I want to um, do the announcements. The Bailey Center and Learning Works, there has been some confusion about the dates and the ornament uh, gift tree. So our next Bailey Center day is next Saturday, the 14th, and the next one on the 28th. I do want to say it was really great last week. We saw Danny, Bella, Sophie, Preston, Zach, Brett, and Malika, and everyone but Malika had their costumes on, so it was really great to see you guys. Thank you for coming out and donating, and you got your ornament. Speaking of ornaments, next week on the 14th and the 28th, you can come and pick out your ornament, one per family, and you have to have it wrapped and brought back or given to Connie by December 5th. If we run out, there will be an opportunity for you to give some money that they're going to put together a basket for the teachers and the people at Learning Works. So um, you can give that way also in case there's not enough ornaments. If you can't come, let us know and we'll get you an ornament. Um, today, uh, Church Council will be meeting at 1 o'clock. Um, I think there's room for a couple more people. Um, if you'd like to come, just let me know. Um, we do have a little more space to our 10 people maximum. Um, our charge conference is Tuesday, November 17th. If you're interested in going, um, please let Pastor Paul know. Um, if you have questions about it, please come to Pastor Paul, me, Jean, um, Debbie, and we can give you some information about the charge conference if you don't know what that is. The preschool is doing very well. They had a very great Halloween celebration and all the kids in their masks. But it seems that there is a short, they have a shortage of paper towels and they've asked each of the families to bring one roll. If you'd like to donate some paper towels, let us know. Maybe you can drop them off while we're here on Sunday and just leave them by the door. Um, but let's see if we can help them out. That seems like kind of a small ask. Um, prayer team continues to meet on Tuesday at 6.30. Continue to send your prayers in. Um, thank you for your pledges and offerings. Uh, we appreciate it, and um, soon we will be introducing how to do that online. Um, Linda Neat has been kind enough to get some information about an Advent Bible study. It's a four-week study. Um, it's by Adam Hamilton, which is, he's pretty easy to follow along with. It's called Incarnation, Rediscovering the Significance of Christmas. Um, if you look at the monthly newsletter, there's details in there. And we'll be sending out some other information for you to be interested in joining in that. We'll do that online, and we might be able to do it on per in person, too, if that's what you'd like to do. We can do whatever you like, depending on how many people sign up. So I know it's been a really long week. Um, I'm taping this Saturday night, uh, not Saturday night, Friday night, <laughs> still still no um, election results. Um, everybody voted, a lot of people voted, but let's be kind, let's be the hope, and let's remember who we follow, and that's God. We'll see you soon. Bye.
voice, O oh, bright heaven sun, heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh, ruler of Good morning, everyone. In a year that has been filled with anxiety, stress, uncertainty, this past week seems to have moved all of that into hyperdrive. Putting this in perspective and placing our trust in God is essential. I've been lucky to have kept my job during the pandemic, but I know there are an awful lot of people that were not so lucky. I know that partly because of my work at the Bailey Center on Wednesday mornings. For the last two weeks, we have handed out food to more than 600 people in the community. We celebrate those who are able to contribute and we celebrate those who work hard to serve our community. That of course means we celebrate our caregivers and first responders. They have been working tirelessly to help our community and some have even fallen victim themselves to COVID. We celebrate our prayer team. We have been diligently meeting every Tuesday night for quite some time, but it occurred to me this morning that all of us are part of, a prayer, of the prayer team. So I ask you in joining me in lifting up the prayers for so many in our CVUMC family that are facing hardships and celebrating personal joys. Wayne Bergeron will receive the final results of his treatments tomorrow. We pray for good news. Jean Laverie lost her ceramics mentor and friend, Jean Taylor. We celebrate a life well lived. Norma Ellis lost her daughter, Vicki, who had been hospitalized for several days. Norma appreciates your prayers and has asked for a few days of privacy before we actually reach out to try to talk to her. Diane Lewis's friend, Veronica, lost her mother and we pray for comfort. Betty Hull has learned that her sister Patricia has been diagnosed with lung cancer and is awaiting results of further tests that may find that the cancer has spread. We pray for peace and comfort. Judy Menke was admitted to the hospital on Friday, Friday morning. Um, she's being treated for um, a recurring infection. She's expecting to be released in a day or two, so we pray for healing. These are times of transition. Our country is in transition and we pray that the transition remains steady and peaceful. Armenia is under attack and needs our prayers. The Stupakis family is anticipating Gregory's possible return home and we pray for a peaceful transition there. Heather Burke and her fiance Oscar are settling into their new home quite nicely. CVUMC is working towards a new future. Dear God, along with our own personal joys and concerns, we lift up all of these prayers to you today. Amen.
And now, let us be in an attitude of prayer and silent meditation. O living God, as we gather for worship, may we always know you welcome each and every one of us into your presence and with an open heart. Our Lord and Savior Jesus wants to show us the love that is always being poured out to each and every one of us. We give thanks for people who teach us how to interact with Jesus, people from the Bible and people we know today. And like the disciples of old, teach us how to deepen our understanding of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus in the world today. Like Zacchaeus, who climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus walking that day in Jericho, let us pray for people who feel they are unworthy of love and and may they feel their lives change just as Zacchaeus did. Today we pray for those with low self-esteem. We pray for people who feel ignored because of their lifestyle, maybe through homelessness, drug addiction, mental illness, unemployment, or as victims of abuse. And Lord, teach us to pray that we will be able to speak words of encouragement and even love when we have the opportunity so that we may prayerfully build others up and share with them the Christ Spirit that is truly able to transform all lives just as it transformed the life of Zacchaeus. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for the morning comes to us from the 19th chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who was a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Word of God for the people of God.
This morning, I'd like to begin this message by telling you about two of my prized possessions. One I have with me today and one I have uh, tucked away in a storage container. But the first is a simple rock. Let me show it to you. This little rock here. And my son, Zachary, whose name is on the back side of the rock, my son Zachary colored it for me when he was three years old and gave it to me on Father's Day. <clears throat> that is what makes it special. The second that I have tucked away in storage, it may appear a little strange, but not so if you go back a few generations. It is a simple pocket knife. It was my father's. <clears throat> it was one that he carried in his pocket when he would work in his garden. I can't tell you how many apples, tomatoes, melons, nectarines, avocados he cut open from my sisters and brothers to enjoy as youngsters. And this pocket knife was the gift he gave to me <clears throat> before he died. These gifts are special to me because of the people who gave them to me. That is the key to life, the real key to joy, the real key to gratitude, to emphasize the giver rather than the gifts. Celebrating the giver is the key. And when we make that breakthrough, that kind of gratitude will change our lives. There's a beautiful example of this in the Bible. It is the story of Zacchaeus in Luke 19. Jesus and his disciples are heading toward Jerusalem and as they pass through Jericho, a great crowd gathered to see Jesus, and Zacchaeus was in the crowd. The scriptures tell us that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and very wealthy and wasn't liked at all by the townspeople. So the local folks rejected him, shunned him, detested him. If you had conducted a popularity contest in Jericho that day, Zacchaeus would have come in 
dead last. This was the setting when Jesus came to Jericho. The people had heard about Jesus and they gathered along the streets to see him. Zacchaeus was also eager to see Jesus, but Zacchaeus was a little man and he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead, climbed into a sycamore tree in hopes of getting a glimpse of this teacher that everyone was talking about. When Jesus saw him, he sensed that Zacchaeus was the loneliest man in town and his heart went out to him. Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus was visibly touched. It had been a long time since anyone had been nice to him. Zacchaeus was so grateful, so filled with gratitude that it changed his life. Notice that Jesus gave him no material gifts. Jesus gave him something better. Love, respect, acceptance, forgiveness. Zacchaeus became so grateful that his whole lifestyle changed. This is the meaning of grace. When we become truly grateful to God for the gift of God's love, that we can't be the same anymore. We are changed. We are turned around. We are converted. We are transformed. Zacchaeus was so grateful for Christ's acceptance of him and love for him that his life, his relationships, and his reason for living were all dramatically changed. This is what real gratitude does. It changes our lives. Let me explain in the following ways. First, Gratitude gives us a new relationship with God. When you realize that God is loving, accepting, forgiving, it changes your life. Zacchaeus learned it that day in Jericho, and it gave him a new relationship with God. Not a relationship built on fear, but a relationship built on love and grace. As Jesus came to accept Zacchaeus, that acceptance touched something within Zacchaeus and brought him back to his senses and back to God and prompted him to see things differently. Likewise, when we love God and accept God's love for us, we will be able to suddenly see things differently. We will see all the beautiful things God has graciously given us. Everywhere we look, we'll see reminders of God and all God has prepared for us. Real gratitude gives us a new relationship with God allowing us to see miracles everywhere. Second, real gratitude gives us a new regard for others. Zacchaeus was so grateful that Jesus had accepted him that he came down out of that sycamore tree with love in his heart. He had a new regard for others and said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and I will pay back four times over all those I have cheated. That is what real gratitude does for us. It enables us to see people differently. The Zacchaeus story teaches us that real gratitude gives us a new relationship with God and a new regard for others. And finally, real gratitude 
gives us a new reason for living. I like to think of what Augustine, an early church writer, wrote, and I quote, The Christian lifestyle is to imitate God's generosity. To imitate God and to emulate God's generosity in our daily living, to take on God's gracious and generous approach, and to live daily in that spirit." End quote. Many years ago, Zacchaeus discovered that spirit. A question for us today is, are we godlike in our living? It is a question to ponder and to act upon as we begin to understand the saving grace of God through Christ. For in our faith, we come to have a new relationship with God, a new regard for others, and a new reason for living. Amen. And now as we go forth into this new day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. from
journey